Hey everyone. So, um, you know, I'm Romaine Johnson. I hope you guys are having a great day and wanted to talk to you a little bit about, about some interesting patients I saw in clinic. I also do a lot of voice uh, evaluations on children and had an interesting clinic yesterday in the sense that it was a very typical clinic. And so I wanted to share some of the videos with you so you can have an idea of what the pediatric laryngologist who sees a lot of voice patients may see on a, on a regular basis. All right, so the first patient, I believe this is sort of classic nodules. Yeah, six-year-old, <laughs> loud, <laughs> screaming all the time, super hoarse. As you can see, it has classic vocal cord nodules. Uh, voice therapy is the treatment of choice for those patients. Here's another patient that comes in, uh, difficult exam, lots of secretions, crying very loudly. The history is vocal cord immobility after cardiac surgery. And so a couple of views, it looks like there is vocal cord mobility on both sides, but again, a tough exam. So lots of secretions and there are a couple of views where I'm not really sure like that view right there. You know, is there, is the left vocal cord moving? If not, um, very inconsistent. And this is one of the challenges of pediatric practice. You don't always get good exams and certainly you don't get children who participate. Uh, typically they're just crying and you just have to try to figure out what's going on. In this case I said it was inconsistent. I wanted to see them back in about six months or so. Uh, again here's a video sped up again. There's a couple of views where like right there it looks like both vocal cords are moving but then there's a couple other views where really I can't be sure. Uh, the voice is pretty normal so uh, I think it's probably recovering from their injury. Uh, next patient is another cardiac patient who still has a weak cry. And in this case, it's sort of classic left vocal cord immobility. Very easy to see. Um, didn't, video didn't take long to, to make the diagnosis. The child's still pretty young, so we're just going to observe for the time being. Maybe it takes nine to 12 months to recover. All right, so the next patient, again, another one of these difficult exams. Uh, in this case, I, this was also a cardiac child who had weak vocal cord weakness in the hospital. Doing much better, the voice is louder, feeding much better. In this instance, I want you to look at the anterior commissure. It, sometimes it does look like there is a glottic web. I think what I'm seeing instead is just paradoxical motion because the child is upset and that is not a true glottic web, but there is a cardiac history. Now, the child didn't have velocardiofacial syndrome, which is one of the conditions that can cause anterior glottic webs, but I'm, I want to make note of that the next time the child comes back for a visit. Deep breath through your nose. All right. Older patient deep breath comes in. Good. This patient had suffered a psychological trauma, severe psychological trauma, and has been having a significant hoarseness since that time. So let's just take a look at the video and uh, listen to his voice. Oh, okay. Take a deep breath in. Good. Mm. Okay. You can see the vocal cords come together, but his voice is very weak. Now, when I talk to the mom and the child, um, they, when he plays video games, his voice sounds better when he's playing video games online. So I think this is maybe a function of this polymio um, as a result of the psychological trauma he suffered. And uh, so I'm recommending uh, psychological evaluation as well as speech therapy. And then I think this is the last patient and good old bump in the throat, burning sensation in the back of the throat cough, obese child, and as you can imagine, basically I'm looking for reflux changes, and he didn't give me the best exam, but I think overall, his vocal cords are normal, his voice sounded normal when I saw him, and uh, uh, without the scope bend, and so uh, I'm just going to say that he's probably got some reflux changes, and that's what's uh, giving him the lump in the throat sensation, and to treat him with Zantac and see him back in a few months and see how he's doing. I hope you guys enjoyed those quick videos.
Uh, again, a pediatric voice can be very interesting. You do see a wide variety of disorders. Most of them are going to be nodules, most common thing. But then any busy practice should also see vocal cord paralysis, as well as some other more esoteric things. Uh, if you're really interested in voice, then consider seeing an adult laryngologist, as you'll see a much wider variety, and also they get better exams. Hope everybody's having a great day. Bye.